In today's tutorial, we are going from this to an absolutely stunning Indian bridal makeover. Hi everyone, it's Smitha. Welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily create a daytime long-lasting smudge-proof makeup that'll turn heads as you walk down the aisle on your wedding day. So if you're ready, let's begin. <music> If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to prep your skin before you start your makeup on your wedding day, please watch my previous video. I'm also going to link it in the description box below. I'm going to start with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. And the reason I love this on brides is because it's super hydrating. And second, it forms a very sticky layer on your skin. And that is important because anything you apply over your skin now has to stick to your skin and stay put and not move. When it stays in place is when the makeup doesn't look blotchy and becomes extra long lasting. I like to focus this primer especially in areas where I sweat or have large pores. So I press it in to fill in the lines and pores to smooth out my skin before I apply any other makeup over this. And here's a trick that I use on my brides. I spritz setting spray over the primer. The one that I'll be using today is the one size until dawn. This forms a second layer of stickiness. And now when you apply makeup over this, it's never going to move until you take it off. Using a peach corrector from the NYX color correcting palette, I'm going to neutralize and color correct the uneven skin, including my dark circles and patches. If you have lighter skin, use a lighter shade of peach. And if you have deeper skin tones, move more towards the orange correctors. I like to diffuse the edges with my finger because when I apply another product over this, I want the flow to be seamless rather than look patchy. It's important to completely let this dry before you apply anything else over it. If you don't have the patience to let it dry, here's a trick. Just set it with a translucent powder. The one that I'll be using today is the Huda Beauty Powder. I'm going to very lightly set this. I'm using very little powder because we don't want to cake up the face. For foundation, I'm going to be using Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 3 and 2, which is wheat. I'm going to first dot it to the center of my face and blend it out with a brush. This brush is from Real Techniques and if you observe, the way I'm blending it out is by dabbing it. I'm pressing it into my skin and I'm not pulling or tugging. And the reason I do this is because you want the foundation to settle over your skin without mixing with the color corrector underneath. When you pull or tug, it is definitely going to mix with that color corrector because it's going to pull some of that color corrector from underneath and your face can start looking peachy or orange. I'm also going to bring it down to my neck. For concealer, I'm going to be using Milani in the shade Warm Beige, which is a true match to my skin tone. And as you can see, as soon as I applied it, it beautifully covers up all the uneven skin tone and the peach corrector that we used over it to neutralize it. I'm going to let this dry a tad bit before I blend it out to get full coverage. And while this is drying, I'm going to use the time to contour my face with the Physician's Formula Contour Stick. This is actually an eye makeup contour stick, but I like to use it on my face because it looks like a crayon and you can use it like a crayon. It's so easy. I'm mostly focusing this in the circumference of my face, in the hollows of my cheekbones, in my jawline, as well as to contour my nose. This also blends beautifully. One side of this contour stick can be used, of course, as a contour. The other side is an eyeshadow primer that I'll be using later on. Using a brush, I'm going to blend it out so it looks seamless. That blends beautifully into the foundation and is also very pigmented. Now that the concealer is a little bit dry and tacky, I'm going to use a concealer brush from Real Techniques to blend everything out. As you can see, that has completely covered up all the uneven skin tone and looks fantastic. So always remember to use a concealer that's a correct match to your skin tone if you're looking to cover uneven skin tone. And if you want to highlight, then you go lighter. Today I'm going to be using the shade 135 to highlight my face. You can use a lighter shade of concealer to highlight the highest planes of your face after you've used a concealer that's a true match to your skin tone to conceal. Because if you use a lighter shade of concealer to conceal, it's going to mix with the blue and purple undertones of your uneven skin tone and start looking ashy. But now, because we've already used a concealer that's a true match to conceal and color correct, we can use a lighter shade over it. 
That looks fantastic and I absolutely love this concealer brush from Real Techniques. If you're looking to invest in a good brush set, I would highly recommend Real Techniques. They will last you a lifetime. I'm going to use a dry sponge to go over the concealer one more time just to make sure everything is well blended. And then I'm going to be using a blush. This is the Patrick Taz blush in She's a Doll. It has a cream and powder blush and I'm using the cream blush first on the highest points of my cheekbones. But first I like to remove the excess on the back of my hands that way it doesn't look blotchy when I apply it. This beautiful flush shade is perfect to add to the bridal charm. Now using the Huda Beauty powder in banana bread, I'm going to first use a brush to very lightly set my face so everything is locked in. And then I'm going to be using the powder again to bake in the highest planes of my face just to add extra layer of highlight. So I'm taking it with a dry sponge and pressing it on the high planes. Baking is a process where you apply your powder in the highest planes and let it sit there without dusting it off for some time. The heat in your body is going to combine that powder with the makeup and it's going to bake it together to give you that flawless coverage and finish. And while this is baking, we'll finish up the eye makeup. For brows, I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade Granite. And the way I like to fill in my brows is to first use the spoolie to brush my brow hair downward so I can clearly see on top and very lightly fill it in. And then I use the spoolie to brush my brow hair upward so I can clearly see the bottom portion and then fill it in. I have to apologize for my brows here. I'm still growing out my brows so you'll see some stray hair. I don't want to pluck it because I want to let it grow and once it's completely grown is when I'm going to shape it. You're welcome to use a brow pomade if you have thinner brows, but a brow pencil gives you a more natural look. Now I'm going to be using some concealer to clean up underneath the brows, that way it gives it some shape. And then I'm also going to be using it on my lid as a base for the eyeshadows. And today I'm going to be creating the most requested eye makeup look for 2024 so far. And I'm going to be using the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Palette. I'm going to first start with this lighter brown shade as transition. I'm going to buff it out at my crease using a small blending brush and I'm going to keep on adding more eyeshadow till I'm happy with the intensity. I'm bringing it all the way from the outer to the inner corner. Next I'm using that eyeshadow with an even smaller brush in my lower lash lines. It's time to deepen everything so I'm going to be using a deeper shade of brown and I'm picking it with the same blending brush and applying it to the very outer corner. Again, bringing it onto the crease, blending everything out with the transition shade. I'm going to keep this focused at the crease and not going to buff it out as much as I did with the lighter brown shade because we want to get that clean blend and that transition, almost like an ombre. And then I'm going to deepen my lower lash line as well. It's time to jazz this up, so I'm going to be using a beautiful anti-gold shimmer. But for the shimmer to pop, it's important to have a sticky surface. So I'm going to be using the eyeshadow primer by Physicians Formula. And then I'm going to be using this beautiful gold shimmer over it. I'm going to press it onto my lid and clean up the edges with a brush. And then using the lighter shade of brown, I'm going to blend out the edges before I use the deeper shade of brown again in the very outer corner just to add more depth. For eyeliner, I'm going to be using Using the Inglot gel liner. I like to use waterproof eyeliners because during wedding everybody is emotional so you don't want your eyeliner to wash off. And if your gel liner is dry you can use a couple drops of the Inglot Duraline to make it as fresh as new. And then I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Pencil in Graphite which is black to tight line. Again, this is smudge proof and waterproof. And then I'm going to be using some black eyeshadow to soften up everything. To finish up, I'm going to curl my lashes with the Sally Hansen Curler. And for mascara, again, I'm using a waterproof mascara. This is the Ico Beach Waterproof Volumizing and Lifting Mascara. And for lashes, I'm using my all-time favorite that I use on every single bride. Whether you have hooded eyes or not, this looks fantastic. This is the Black Label Lashes in Brazen. And then I'm going to finish up with a coat of mascara to my lower lashes as well. With this lighter matte shade, I'm going to highlight the inner corner as well as brow bones. You're welcome to use a metallic highlighter too. And here is the most requested eye makeup for 2024. 
actually I take that back. It is in fact the most requested bridal eye makeup look. Brides probably prefer this because with every change of outfit, you don't have to change your makeup. If you have neutral makeup, it goes well with every outfit. Let's now go ahead and dust off that excess powder that I'd used for baking. And as you can see, that has brightened up my highest planes. I'm going to be using the blush again. This is She's a Doll by Patrick Ta, but this time I'm using the powder blush. I'm going to remove the excess and use it over the cream blush that we've used before. That is a super pigmented blush and it is such a stunning shade. For highlighter, I'm going to be using the Kooky Highlighter by Benefit Cosmetics. If you don't have a highlighter, you can also substitute a light metallic eyeshadow for highlighter. I'm going to apply this again on the highest planes and then I like to use a powder puff to press it around my face so it doesn't look very powdery. Now for lipstick, I'm going to be using the Bare Minerals Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Royal. And they're literally quite mean royal. Just look at that stunning red. And then I always like to use concealer to clean up around the edges. If you want to keep the same shade of lipstick for the whole day and you don't want to smudge it, you don't want to keep retouching it, then you can use a lip sealant over it. One of my favorites is Lip Coat and I'm going to link it in the description box below. It's time to lock everything in so I'm going to be using the One Size Until Dawn setting spray. I finished this look with a stunning bridal ensemble. I made the head jewelry, the Mata Pati myself, and the other jewelry is from India, as well as my beautiful outfit. And here is the finished look. I'd love to know if anybody is getting married this year or know of somebody who's getting married and you'll be attending as a wedding guest. Let me know in comments below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs up. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new one. Bye, guys. Bye.